According to EPA, the biggest uh, source of um, atmospheric ammonia in the U.S. is animal manure, with poultry repo uh, reportedly contributing 27% uh, of the total. Atmospheric ammonia emissions can lead to environmental problems such as particulate uh, matter less than 10 microns, excessive nitrogen loading into the aquatic environment, and soil acidification. We measured ammonia emission factors for boilers, 50-day-old boilers, and found it's around 45.5 grams per bird. Uh, the interesting thing in that study is over half of the nitrogen excreted by boiler chickens is lost into the atmosphere before the uh, manure is cleaned out of the houses. Now, 45.5 grams doesn't sound like much, but in Arkansas, we have about 1.1 billion boilers produced each year. And so this results in about 50 million kilograms of ammonia going up into the atmosphere, which has a fertilizer value close to $100 million. And so we need to convert this waste to worth. If you look at a, a house basis, it's about 33 or 34 pounds of uh, ammonia per house per day. And our goal is to try to capture one third of that. In some watersheds, uh, growers can't apply litter because of soil test phosphorus thresholds, and they have to buy a commercial uh, nitrogen fertilizer to meet the nitrogen needs. If we develop a scrubber that could catch five pounds of nitrogen per day, then the grower could recover uh, 1,825 pounds of nitrogen per unit per year. Now, if this grower has two units on each chicken house, and he has uh, four houses, then he or she could recover about 15,000 pounds of nitrogen per year. And that'd be enough to fertilize 100 acres of pasture or corn with about 150 pounds of nitrogen per acre. And of course, air and water quality would benefit. Well, you really can't see uh, these pictures very well. Our unit has uh, conducted research on ammonia scrubbers for about a decade now. Currently, we have one patent on these scrubbers and two more in the pipeline. And they work best on houses that use two to four minimum ventilation fans uh, during the cooler months of the year. You can't see that at all. Uh, the pros of our original scrubber were it was cheap, uh, it was less than a thousand bucks, small, it had a five by five footprint, and simple, there was only one pump and no heaters or cool cells. Uh, acid use uh, was high in the scrubber though. Dust from poultry house contains manure, which has a very high alkalinity. And so more, the, more than half of the acid that was used was neutralizing that dust. And there were lo large losses of uh, acid and nitrogen uh, via mist. In extremely cold weather, the uh, contents of the reservoirs would, uh, would freeze. Uh, although it had problems, the original scrubber did make the uh, NRCS webpage, a uh, picture of it anyway. Our second version consisted of two scrubbers. The first was a water scrubber, which captured most of the dust, about 99% of the dust. And the second was an acid scrubber. Uh, and we found in that dust scrubber, we would collect about a, a five gallon bucket full of sediment, whereas in the uh, acid scrubber, there would be maybe only a thimble full of sediment, indicating the dust scrubber was getting most of the dust. The problem was, uh, we, we found that the nitrogen levels in the reservoir would build up to a certain point, and then they would start declining with time, even though the pH of the reservoir was still acidic. And when we used an acid containing sulfate, uh, and we would follow that sulfate concentration with time, we saw it was declining with time, indicating there was a leak in the system. But we didn't have a conventional leak, and so we concluded that those losses much, must be due to a mist uh, that's, that was leaving the scrubber. Now, a fine mist may only be one drop, equivalent to one drop per second, but one drop per second is three mils in a minute. That's 180 mils in an hour. That's about four liters in a day. If you're growing 50-day-old birds, that's 225 liters. And our reservoir is about 360 liters, so you could lose at that rate about over 60% of your nitrogen and your acid uh, as mist. Exhaust air from bird houses is warm, but uh, on the air cycle of the birds, uh, any one fan may not be running very often. And acid and salt mixtures have a, a lower freezing point than water, but they'll still freeze, so to avoid these problems, heaters were installed in both the acid and dust scrubbers. And so the objectives of my talk today uh, is to talk about redesigning the scrubber to improve efficiency, to conduct uh, full-scale uh, testing at various ventilation rates under very controlled conditions, 
to evaluate the cost, practicality, and efficacy of various acids for scrubbing ammonia, and to build and install scrubbers on poultry farms in Arkansas, Delaware, Pennsylvania, and Virginia, and measure ammonia, dust, and VOC concentrations. This research was funded by uh, ARS uh, and by grants from USDA, NRCS, and National Fish and Wildlife Foundation. Well, this is our scrubber. It's very difficult to see. Uh, uh, it has, uh, the current version has uh, two scrubbers, a dust scrubber and ammonia scrubber, and the shells are made out of fiberglass, and each has uh, a 360-liter reservoir. And we're focusing on the uh, minimum vent fans. If you look at the work by the Dutch folks, they found that you get the biggest bang from the buck uh, looking at minimum ventilation. A dust scrubber can hold up to eight rows of wooden slats at 45 degree angle. And our design goal was to keep static pressure below about 0 0.3 inches. Um, if that's exceeded, you can remove rows of these slats. And we're using wooden uh, slats instead of fiberglass or plastic because they're much cheaper. A simple float switch is used to control the water level. We have a cheap pump in there to recirculate the water in the uh, dust scrubber, and then we've put in a heating element in the current design. And this is a half horsepower uh, pump, a little giant pump that we're using. Um, it delivers about 22 gallons a minute. The acid scrubbers used in Holland and Germany use nozzles to scrub ammonia. But if the solution uh, used for scrubbing is being recycled, these nozzles are going to inevitably clog due to uh, the large amount of particulate matter uh, in the exhaust from poultry houses. And so uh, using nozzles also res results in fine droplets, which will enhance that loss of nitrogen as a mist that we talked about. And so to avoid these problems, we chose a real simple uh, delivery system where we drilled holes basically in PVC pipe, 0.04 inches, uh, and that results in a water curtain. So the distances between these holes are uh, two inches near the pump, uh, inch and a half in the middle third, and an inch apart on the far side of the pump. This system can run for several flocks without any clogs, but if they do clog, then you can just take the end cap off the PVC and use a, a long handle brush to clean out that pipe. We've put a, a, a feather trap over the reservoir of the dust scrubber uh, to catch feathers and very large particulate matter. It's just a screen, and we've, we've found all kinds of stuff in there, including rats and cats. Um, uh, we put acid tolerant heaters by uh, Vulcan Industries in there. They turn on at 38 degrees and have a 120 degree limit switch. And if all the heaters and pumps are working simultaneously, the, the maximum uh, energy use is about 24 amps. We have a one third horsepower magnetically uh, driven pump used for the acid scrubber. It's uh, expensive but can withstand extremely acidic conditions such as concentrated sulfuric. And when the pump's not running, the acid drains back down the reservoir reducing the risk of frozen pipes. We have plastic cool cell material that was enclosed in stainless steel uh, frame on the exhaust end. And although that's a pretty good uh, scrubbing medium, we've really put it in there for the mist collection. It's on hinges and it allows for easy access uh, to the scrubber. We've tested uh, all kinds of configurations, including dual cool cells. And with that setup, we can remove 95% of the ammonia and an airstream of uh, 5,000 cubic feet per minute that has 25 parts per million ammonia in it. But we think cleaning and other maintenance is going to be a bear with dual cool cells, so we're just going to have one cool cell uh, layer in there. On our preliminary design studies, uh, the main criteria of ammonia scrubber set forth by NRCS is a pressure drop should be less than 0.3 inches. So our initial research was conducted to determine how slat angle affects uh, static pressure and airflow. The goal was to keep the, uh, uh, to determine the angle that would maximize uh, particle collisions with wet surface while minimizing pressure drop. Uh, we also evaluated how the number and arrangement of slats, uh, water curtains, and cool cells would affect static pressure and airflow. And so I don't know if you can, if you can see uh, this here. This is a, uh, a big poultry house fan. Uh, it's a 48 inch fan. Uh, oh shoot, that was the wrong button. Sakid, sorry about that. We have that uh, 48 inch fan. Uh, about three engineers to fix this. Thing, huh? <laughs> okay, it's back. Oh, uh, hey, <laughs> I just had to do that. Uh, yeah, and uh, that's hooked to a fans unit 
and uh, which we're measuring airflow with. And then we have a plenum that hooks it to the uh, dust scrubber and the acid scrubber. And the uh, airflow was measured uh, with a fan unit. Uh, again, static pressure measured with a uh, Citra 2601 differential pressure sensor. And this is the relationship between static pressure and the slat angle. And you can see that's an exponential relationship. And you get above about 45 degrees, and that static pressure really builds up. Uh, this is the same data looking at airflow. And this is with one row of slats in the, in the dust scrubber. Uh, and again, you get to that 45 degree angle and the airflow really starts cutting out. Uh, the static pressure is plotted here as a function of the number of uh, slats in the dust uh, and acid scrubber. And again, we looked at no cool cell, one cool cell, uh, one cool cell, and water, one water curtain, uh, one cool cell, two water curtains, up to three water curtains, and looked at the, at the uh, pressure drop. And with our current configuration, we're getting a pressure drop of about 0.15. Going on to the acid testing, we wanted to evaluate the effects of uh, water, a neutral salt, five acid salts, and four strong acids on ammonia reduction. Rates of each acid were equivalent to two liters of concentrated sulfuric. Um, each acid was tested for three runs that were two hours each at two fan speeds, uh, 40 hertz, which was resulted in airflows of about 5,000 cubic feet per minute, and 60 hertz, which would be 8,000 cubic feet per minute. And with that range, we're going to get everything, uh, all the minimum vent fans pretty much in the U.S. on poultry houses. Anhydrous ammonia was metered, metered into a distribution system located in front of the fan, and the amount entering the fan was varied so, as needed to achieve 25 parts per million. And all the folks uh, working on this were respirators uh, equipped with uh, ammonia cartridges. Sometimes we work in chicken houses with ammonia as high as 100 parts per million. And so uh, we're used to dealing with this uh, uh, ammonia. During each run, the airflow was measured using a fan union. Again, the ammonia was introduced via distribution system directly in front of the fan. Ammonia concentrations entering and leaving the scrubber were measured every five minutes. Uh, during the two-hour trials with an ANOVA 1412 uh, photoacoustic multi-gas analyzer. That's a close-up of the distribution system. Again, that's a picture of the train. Uh, at 5,000 CFM, air residence time in the scrubber is about uh, three seconds, and it's about one and a half seconds in the uh, acid scrubber. And that's, that's, the, that's the important time, because that's where you're getting the ammonia uh, removed from the system. We had a stainless steel star sampler at the, uh, to sample the intake in the exhaust air. And also on the back, uh, we built a little frame and we put Watton uh, 36 filter papers uh, to catch uh, uh, acid in the mist and also to catch uh, uh, nitrogen. And we, we found out that with using that cool cell material, we got rid of all of our mist losses. This is some of the data uh, from the study. This is one example. Uh, this ammonia concentration as a function of time over eight hour period, where we were switching from 60 hertz to 40 hertz to 60 hertz, 40 hertz. Again, 60 hertz about 8,000 cubic feet per minute. 40 is 5,000. And you can see it works a little bit better at 40 hertz because you have uh, less airflow going through there. This particular chemical was sodium bisulfate. It's sold under the trade name of PLT. And overall, you can see we're getting about a 70% reduction uh, with sodium bisulfate in the scrubber. This is the same graph where we put water in the acid scrubber. And you can see uh, after about an hour or two, uh, the intake and the exhaust are about the same concentration. However, for that first hour, we were getting some reduction with water. Water's cheap. It can scrub ammonia from air as long as the pH is below about 8. If a corn grower was irrigating uh, with acid well water, then it would be easy to devise a system where fresh water was constantly uh, trickled into both the dust and acid scrubber and then discharged into a pond or reservoir. Now, if you timed it where the residence time of the water in the scrubber was equal to about an hour of fan time, then the nitrogen concentration in that water would build up to about 50 or 100 parts per million. And that would help with the nitrogen needs of the crop. The disadvantage of using water alone is that you're going to have to build a pond. You're going to use about 1,000 gallons per fan per day. 50-day old bird, that's 50,000 gallons. You got 10 of these on your farm, that's a half million gallons in, during a flock of birds. So if you have a pond like that, that may require 
uh, a permit, at least in Arkansas, with Reg 5. This is ammonia concentration in the reservoir as a function of time again, going to eight hours. And you can see with PLT, we built up a concentration up to around 2,500 milligrams per liter. With water, it was about 100 uh, milligrams per liter. And the difference is pH. Uh, water, the pH kicks up to around nine and a half. Uh, first with uh, PLT, it's an acid. The pH stays down there. And you're converting ammonia to ammonium, which is going to stay in your reservoir. This amount of ammonia captured by tap water during different runs. We did six runs. The first run, we were catching 10 or 15 grams of nitrogen in the reservoir. And then as time went on, we, we weren't catching anything, basically. The reason for that is the pH. Uh, right at first, the pH is low. You can catch that nitrogen as the pH uh, go, goes up, then you're not going to catch any ammonia. Well, here's the results, really, of that acid study. This is the ammonia reduction in exhaust. And this is comparing the inflow and the outflow for water. And then calcium chloride, which is our neutral salt. And then all of our uh, acid salts, ferric chloride, ferric sulfate, aluminum chloride, aluminum sulfate, and sodium bisulfate. And you can see the iron compounds and aluminum compounds worked really good uh, compared to sodium bisulfate. But the problem with those is when you're, you're doing a basically an acid-base titration, ammonium, ammonia is a base, and you're titrating that ferric iron, and you're making ferric hydroxide, which is rust. And that really gums up everything, especially your cool cell. It will clog it up over time. Aluminum, the same thing. You get aluminum hydroxide form. Okay, and so because of that, of these acid salts, we decided sodium bisulfate is probably going to work the best for the scrubber. Okay, I'm almost done. Uh, ammonia reduction in the exhaust is shown here uh, for the different strong acids, and you can see uh, sodium bisulfate worked just about as well as those. The uh, nitrogen captured is shown here for the, for the different salts in uh, uh, grams per hour. Again, the iron aluminum compounds tended to work better than sodium bisulfate. Uh, we're catching about 100 to 140 grams of nitrogen per hour. Uh, and these are the different strong acids. Uh, for some reason, hydrochloric acid uh, doesn't work very well. And these strong acids are nasty. They, uh, the hydrochloric puts out all kinds of fumes. Uh, the sulfuric makes a very exothermic reaction. So we decided we're not going to work. We're scared somebody's going to put an eye out with these strong acids. Scott Beckton is one of my technicians. He's a carpenter, electrician, mechanic, plumber, and ventilation expert. Without him, we couldn't have done this. We built six of these scrubbers so far, uh, four in Virginia and two in Arkansas, and we're going to build five more that go on farms in Arkansas, Delaware, and Pennsylvania. So the conclusions, the redesigned scrubber does a good uh, job of removing ammonia from air, even at high airflow rates. Uh, the goal of keeping pressure drop less than 0.3 was met. Acid salts of aluminum and iron work better per mole of acid than strong acids or sodium bisulfate, but we believe aluminum and iron hydroxides are going to clog that cool cell material. Due to the inherent danger of strong acids, we've decided to use PLT in our future research. It's sold as a litter amendment to poultry growers, so it's readily available. It also dissolves real easy. Water may be the most sustainable scrubbing solution. However, the volumes needed are going to require a pond or lagoon to be dug, and growers don't like that idea due to potential regulations. Future plans for ammonia scrubbers are going to be attached to sidewall fines of a boiler house in uh, Madison County, Arkansas, and we're going to evaluate the efficacy to reduce ammonia particulate matter and VOCs. We're also going to measure how, PL how much PLT, water, and electricity is used by the scrubbers, as well as how much nitrogen is captured and do a cost-benefit uh, analysis. Data on the efficacy to scrub ammonia is also going to be evaluated at the farms in Delaware, Pennsylvania, and Virginia. And finally, we're also going to evaluate water as a scrubbing solution, but it may only be cost-effective in those areas where they're irrigating crops. In western Arkansas, we have most, mainly pastures and no one's irrigating there. But in east Arkansas, we have row crops and they irrigate, so it may be cost-effective there. Thank you.